It's here. The only device that has ever gotten me in trouble as a biomed. Today we're going to talk about ultrasonic therapy. Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. This right here is an ultrasonic therapy system. It consists of your base unit, which is a generator, and down here is a crystal head. There's various different heads that will plug into the port, and they provide ultrasound energy into the body. We measure it using an ultrasound power watt meter, which you can see is just a modified OHA scale consists of a cone that's suspended from the heat from the measuring element. It goes into a bath of degassed water and the head will lower down into the water right atop the cone. And what will happen is we let the water quit moving around, we zero out the scale, and then we can measure the watts for this particular head. Now what exactly is ultrasound therapy? Despite all these buttons up here, on this particular unit it's got various other functions like um, it's got stim capabilities for muscle stimulation and a few other things but all that we're concerned about is this area down here for ultrasound. Now you can see this is duty cycle, 10%, 20%, 50%, and continuous duty, which means it's always on. And then you can see up here it says 1 megahertz, 2 megahertz, and 3 megahertz. Now the megahertz is the frequency of the crystal, what it's going to emit. And the lower the frequency, the deeper the penetration in the tissue. Now an ultrasound they're going to use these to heat up tissue deep below the surface and it does that by vibrating the water molecules against each other kind of like your microwave in your kitchen which basically vibrates at a very particular frequency the water molecules vibrate which causes friction and that causes heat this basically works on the same principle only you're not cooking a turkey you're cooking your arm or leg it's all good this is extremely low wattage. This might be 5 to 10 watts, whereas your microwave at home is going to be probably 800 to 1,000 watts. Now what we do to measure this, when the scale is zeroed out and your particular head is down, we then turn up our power, which this isn't going to work for me because this unit is currently damaged. See, I hit start and I've got low to nothing. And what happened is I was mid calibration and my power cord wiggled out of my base unit and it lost power, mid calibration. Well, when you begin a calibration, it's going to overwrite the parameters for your head. So the unit writes the parameters to the head for its impedance, it's power output calibration settings, etc. And when you lose those settings, you have nothing and you have to start from scratch. So that's why this guy's in for repair. I have to go through manually and type in the exact parameters for the head back into the unit. And the only way that I can do that at this point is I have to call the manufacturer. This unit right here has got a serial number on the probe. You can see it's on the little sticker and they will read back to me the settings line for line that I have to put back into the base unit to get the head to begin to work again. So that is it. Now earlier you heard me say that it's got degassed water that's inside it. Why do you suppose I need degassed water? Since we're using such low ultrasound output wattage every single little thing can affect your output which as you guys know gases compress water will not which is why it's sitting in a tank of water 
if there's lots of gas bubbles in there they will act like shock absorbers and they will absorb some of the energy that's emitted from the head and I will get inaccurate readings. Now I've never really had a huge problem with this before. You know I just use tap let it sit for a little bit and then tap on the side a little bit and the bubbles will come out but um, I haven't ever really had a huge problem with the gas of the water. So anyway, how is it? How is it that this unit got me in trouble? Well, this guy right here, back when I was a junior level biomed, um, if you guys didn't know, the regulations for calibrating medical equipment have changed over the years. It used to be uh, verbatim, whatever's in the manual is exactly what you have to do for your PM procedure, your calibration. And over the period of time, we've migrated towards a risk-based PM system. Now, there's obviously still priority placed on OEM requirements from the manual. But no longer do we have to do every single test if every single test isn't likely to fail. And this is more prevalent in other devices, but this guy right here, I used to write a truncated version of my output settings and I never wrote into extreme detail and on a lot of the older CMMS systems the older databases they didn't have line items for every single thing in a template you had to type out every single thing that you did to the, the device and I didn't type out every single thing that I did to it and as you can tell there's a lot of stuff to test on this I mean a PM on this guy could easily take 45 minutes to an hour well, I got inspected once, and he wanted to see. Uh -huh. it, was, it was actually a chief master sergeant who came in to inspect my shop in the Air Force, and he wanted to see what I wrote in my notes for one of these guys. And I had the outputs written, but I didn't have things like the stem output, its uh, milliamperage. I didn't have that written into my work orders. And although I, you know, went went ahead and tested that stuff. If it's not written in the work order, it doesn't exist. Modern day CMMS systems often have templates or checklists that you have to complete in order to complete the PM. It is kind of a checks and balances type so that it catches everything. But back in the day, that wasn't such a thing. So I got in trouble for this guy right here because I didn't have everything written out in my work order. And that's what taught me a lot about my proper documentation in my work orders. So guys, that is ultrasonic therapy. It's kind of a simple system. It just heats up tissue to allow more blood circulation, which speeds up the healing process in uh, deep tissue. But it's, it's an important piece to all physical therapy areas. And although they don't use a lot of these other features, we still have to test them when we do a PM. But the main thing here is your ultrasound head and be very, very careful while you're doing your measurements and write all your settings down <sighs> because you might erase your settings like I did. So guys, that is ultrasonic therapy. Thanks for watching.